Hi everybody, it is Charity and I am back and I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video today. You can probably tell from the title of the video. Tomorrow was my birthday, if you're watching this on Friday, which is when I'm planning to upload it. I wanted to, to do like a different video for today. I debated for a while if I was just going to do like a birthday makeup video and that kind of is what I'm going to be doing. My husband and I thought it would be really cute if I did a look that was like birthday cake inspired. As you can see, I already have a look on, but hold up, be patient, I'll get there. And so I thought I would dip into my ABH electric cake liners and create little sprinkles, which I originally was going to do on my eyes and then thought it might be kind of cute to do them up on my cheekbones, but then ultimately determined it would be cutest if I did them like freckles across my nose. So I'm going to be doing that today and I guess we'll just kind of see how it turns out. I probably should have taken pictures of this look before I filmed in case this tanks. But if it does, oh well. Sometimes that happens in life and you kind of got to roll with the punches. But anyway, I'm going to be doing that and while I do that, I am going to be talking with you guys, sharing with you guys 25 lessons that I have learned in my 25 years of life. You probably read the title like and you know what this is already. I don't know why I'm going on. I'm going to go ahead and just get into that then. <laughs> All right, lesson number one is that flowers are for everyone. That's pretty straightforward. Basically, Flowers are beautiful and a good and sweet and nice gift to get for your friends. So keep that in mind because if you get your friends flowers, I think you'll find that they are going to be so adorably surprised and grateful for them. Lesson number two is that you, regardless of what you may have been told throughout your whole life, don't need to monetize your hobbies. I know. This is crazy and like we just live in this world where I feel like we can often get kind of depressed and frustrated and upset with ourselves if we're not turning the things that we're good at into a money maker. But so often when you do that, I found you kind of end up burning out and you kind of end up starting to hate your hobbies they got turned into a job. If you're good at something, regardless of what people may say and what their intentions may be when they say it, you don't have to worry about turning your hobby into a money maker. A hobby is supposed to be something that you do because you enjoy it. And if you want to turn it into a money maker, that's great. And if you want to share it with the world, that's great. But if you want it to just be something for you, let it be something for you. There's no shame in that. Lesson number three, tip your waiters and your bartenders and your hairstylists and your delivery people. All of the people that you should be tipping, you need to be tipping. I'm not gonna go into this very much because it's really straightforward. Honestly, if you're not tipping your people, just know that I'm judging you really hard over here. Tipping is part of certain experiences, certain purchases and such. And so if you can't afford to tip, you can't afford those experiences and that kind of is what it is. Lesson number four, learn a second language. I have quite a few friends who I met overseas when I lived in Germany or who I've just interacted with on various points of my life who did not grow up learning English but decided to learn it. But I find myself thinking about how if they hadn't put in that time to learn that second language, I wouldn't have that relationship with them. And my life would be far lacking without that relationship with them. So not only is it stimulating for you and good and important to learn new things, just think of all the relationships you'll create as a byproduct. Moving on to lesson number five. It's good and important to have a place to put your thoughts. I am an external processor, which means that when I'm processing through things, I need to put them somewhere. I need to write them out in a journal. I need to vent out loud to my husband or a friend. 
And not everyone processes things the same way and not everyone is going to want to talk out loud while they're figuring things out for themselves. But even if it's just within a journal or to a pet or something of that nature, having a place to put your thoughts, overall it's just good for you and can just be a really good and helpful way to make sure that you're working through the stuff that comes up in your life actively and not just sitting in it. And whether you choose to put your thoughts with your friends or just in a journal, it's a good thing to do. Number six, support your friends' endeavors. What this means is if your friend starts a business, starts selling their art or starts doing this, one, be interactive on their socials. That's a really big way that people grow their businesses and their endeavors these days. And two, pay full price for their art or their services. I know it's normal to expect things for free or to expect things for a discounted price from friends, but if you really want to be supportive of whatever it is that your friends are working on, money talks. And while they may be insistent that, oh, you don't need to pay, you're like family, do it anyway. Same as you would pay full price for a similar item or service from anywhere else, support your friends. We all need each other to get by. Lesson number seven, remember the 10 second rule. And what the 10 second rule is, in short, if you've never heard of it before, is if you notice something about someone's appearance that is disheveled or for whatever reason you think it needs to be corrected, if that thing can be corrected in 10 seconds, like a messed up shirt, food on your face or in your teeth, hair that's kind of flopped over awkwardly, go ahead and let your friend know but if that thing can't be corrected, for example, someone's complexion, a makeup style you don't like, someone's body type, someone's outfit. Why you gotta say that? Why is that necessary? Why do you feel like you're contributing to the world by making people feel bad about themselves? Spoiler alert, you're not. You're kind of just being a dick. So we all need each other to let each other know when there's spinach in our teeth. I do not need you to let me know that you think my face is ugly. That I have a breakout. I already know. Shut up. Lesson number eight, you don't have to be good at things in order to enjoy them. Suck at singing, suck at dancing, suck at chess, but find joy in them. Do it anyway. Fuck what anybody says. Like I mentioned before, a hobby is supposed to be something that you do to enjoy yourself, that you do to have fun, not something that you do just because you're good at it. As a byproduct of doing things, you will get good at them, most likely. But if you're not, and if you don't get good at them, who cares? If you enjoy it, do it. Life is a mess and we need to find joy wherever we can. Lesson number nine, your experiences are not universal. The things that you have lived through and the things that you've been taught and the things that you have experienced throughout the course of your life are all important and real and valid, but they do not speak for everyone. They do not speak for everyone as a whole and they don't speak for everyone even that's like you. People's experiences are real and legitimate, whether or not they're things that you may feel like you can understand. And it's important to listen to people's experiences and to let them be and not determine that you think they're lying or that they're making things up or that they're exaggerating just because you yourself have not experienced those same things. We all live different lives and it's important to be mindful of that. Lesson number 10, makeup has no gender. And in that same breath, clothing and nail polish and piercings and tattoos and hair colors and hairstyles also have no gender. They're arbitrary things that we use to decorate our flesh prisons and people should be able to do whatever they want in regards to those things. And it's none of yours or anyone else's business what someone may decide to decorate themselves with. People are out 
all of time have dressed the way they have wanted to and they are going to continue to. And if that bothers you, see lesson number seven. The 10 second rule. <laughs> lesson number 11, learn how to cook. This is something that I've been doing for myself recently and it has been really nice and really fun. Not only because it's something that's good to learn just for survival, but also because it can be really rewarding to make something for yourself or for friends or family members or significant others. And it'll save you a lot of money in the long run if you're going to be going out and eating out as an alternative. Lesson number 12, hydrate. This one is straightforward for your health, for your skin, for your general well-being. Drink water. Lesson number 13, integrity first. Integrity isn't just a reference to telling the truth all the time, but rather living a life that's genuine. Being genuinely yourself, being honest with people about the things that they have done that you love and the things that they have done that hurt you, standing up for the things that are important to you, all of these fall under that category. I have the utmost respect for people that live their lives genuinely and with integrity and aspire to live that way for myself too. Lesson number 14 is to set boundaries with everyone, your family, your friends, your significant other even. If we're not willing to advocate for ourselves and for the things we need. Your friends, family, significant others can't possibly know what it is that you need if you're not going to tell them. And so while it may seem scary <laughs> to tell people, I need you to back off. I need you to not say that. I need you to let me figure this out for myself or whatever other plethora of things it may be. Ultimately, you'll find that your relationships end up being a lot happier if you're willing to advocate for yourself and set those boundaries. Lesson number 15, be mindful of other people's boundaries and respect them. If a friend tells you, hey, I need to vent and I need you to listen, the worst thing you can do in that situation is responding with advice or by telling them what they should do in that situation. If a friend tells you, hey, I'm going through a time and I need a little bit of space right now, the worst thing that you can do is constantly be checking up on them. And I know this is something that is different in every relationship, but relationships go both ways. And if you want and expect the people in your life to be respectful of your boundaries, you need to be willing to do the same for them. Lesson number 16, mind your own business. This one is really honestly just all encompassing and shouldn't need to be said, but is. You don't need to insert your opinion on every person that you see or interact with online or whatever. Unless someone chooses to talk to you about this or invite you in or ask your opinion, it's none of your business. Mind your own. Lesson number 17, reading is good for you. And this includes listening to audiobooks. I read somewhere recently, I apologize that I don't actually have a source, but listening to audiobooks activates the same part of your brain as reading does. And I know we live in a world that's crazy and busy and we don't have time to read as much as we may have when we were kids, but taking an hour at the end of your day or listening to audiobooks on your commute or while you work even, is such a great way to keep stimulating your mind and keep learning things, which is something we can all benefit from. Lesson number 18, self-awareness is key. Key to growing, key to becoming a better person, key to becoming who it is that you want to be. And what this means is not only acknowledging the ways that you're flawed and the ways that you need to improve, but also the things about yourself that are great, the things that you have to offer the world, the ways that you're talented and the ways that you love. You are the one person that you have to spend your entire life with from start to finish. And so constantly trying to be aware of who it is that you are as you grow and change through the years is going to be such a good way, not only to continue to grow and become a better version of yourself, but to be happy with who it is that you are. Life lesson number 19, never stop learning. Whether it be hobbies or 
language, like I said, or history or math <laughs> or about other people or about yourself. There is so much in this world to know and we will make it our entire lives without ever knowing all of it. So learn as much as you can. You'll be a very interesting person if you do. <laughs> Life lesson number 20, community makes all the difference. Surrounding yourself with people who have the same values as you and who have the same hobbies and loves as you and who can walk with you through your heavy and your joyous seasons of life makes all the difference in your ability to live with fullness and enjoy the life that you've been given. Moving on to Life lesson number 21, which is just grace. Have grace. And not just for other people, which is important, but also for yourself. We're all human. We all fuck up. We all get things wrong. And the only way we can continue to grow and improve ourselves as people is through the gentle correction and the patience and the forgiveness and the grace of each other. I know I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for the people that called me out on my crap and told me how I needed to improve, but also were patient and were willing to allow me the opportunity to fix whatever it was that I'd done wrong and improve. That's something we all need, I think. Lesson number 22. Sometimes self-care means doing things that you don't want to do. It's not all bubble baths and tea and movies. For me, what this means is I know that when I'm in a messy or cluttered environment, I get really stressed and therefore depressed and lethargic. So in order to maintain my own mental health, if you will, sometimes that means I have to put away laundry, tidy up the living room, do things that I may not want to do because I know I'm going to feel so much better <laughs> and be so much more functional and happy and productive if I do. So whatever that means for you, sometimes you just gotta do it. Life lesson number 23 is that it costs zero dollars not to be an asshole. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Life lesson number 24 is to be okay asking for what you need from the people in your life. This is similar to a boundaries thing, but is more all encompassing. Whether what you need is someone to listen or advice or a hug or time to yourself or a favor or any other myriad of things, learning to ask for it with the grace and the openness that maybe sometimes people won't be able to give you those things is going to do worlds for your relationships with those people and encourage those people in your life to do the same, to ask for what they need from you. We all kind of got to give and take to help each other along. I've arrived at a place where I am happy with this look. I think it turned out hella cute. And so I'm gonna go ahead and give you lesson number 25, which is that love is the answer. And this sounds like the just the cheesiest, hippiest shit. And it is, but I really and genuinely believe that. I believe in God whose essence is love. And because of that, who wants us all to be that to each other. But whether or not you believe in God or not. Love, I think we can all agree, is the only thing that keeps us going. <laughs> it's the thing that brings all of us together. It's the thing that makes life worth living. Love people. And if you keep that as your focus, if we all keep that as our focus, I think we'll turn out okay. That's all of them. I'm only 25. Well, we'll be 25 on Saturday, which I used to think is old until my husband pointed out that at 24, someone who is 
33 has lived 25% longer than I have. I'm not old, I'm far from it, and even if I was, it doesn't matter, time is made up. <laughs> this was different. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you can take something from the things that I have learned. But that's it, that's all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. 24 was good. And it's ended in a space where I feel really creative and really excited to learn new things and keep moving forward. So wherever you are in the world, whether you choose to like this video and subscribe to my channel or not, know that I love you and I appreciate you. And I hope that this year, whatever that means, is good to you. Before I close out, I want to introduce you all to an appropriate friend, I think, today. This is Point Dexter, and he is a moosh moosh, like the other moosh mooshes we've introduced you to. I think that was Millie the cow and Hex the honeybee. But this is Point Dexter. He's a narwhal, but he's also like got an ice cream cone for a horn, and he has sprinkles on him. So we match. He's an ice cream narwhal. He's cute. And Poindexter and I both love you. And thank you for being here. And hope you have a good rest of the day or night. And hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye. Saturday, July 18th has been my birthday for pretty much my entire life. What?